hello pray and share warriors how are y'all doing tonight i am doing great i'm doing great it is a great tuesday i hope you had an awesome tuesday i did um i just got through doing some um i watched some people doing presentations on human trafficking i was trying to learn i don't have to do my presentation until the 8th so i thought well i was invited to come so I went and I listened and I learned a lot so that's good it's always good to go and learn before it's your turn so tonight I want to talk to you about why do people lie I wanted to read some scripture about it and um, just uh, delve into um, that sin is sin but it is a sin lying is a sin little lies big lies you know they're sin in God's eyes and uh, you can get caught in the bondage of living in that uh, lifestyle of lies and um, I just I've been following some stories about missing children and stuff and it just breaks my heart because usually when it comes down to it the parents have have done something and instead of telling the truth they lie about it and I wonder at times why they don't just call 911 and maybe it's not too late for that child since they're not medical professionals and don't know but I don't want to be judgmental I just want to come to the subject uh, from a scriptural point of view. So let's go ahead and jump into prayer, okay? I don't want to be judging people, but sometimes I don't understand. God, we just come to you and we just thank you. We thank you, God, that you, your word, teaches us what you want us to do God and all we have to do is read it and abide by it and that seems so easy it seems so easy but sometimes it's so hard but we thank you God because you're a forgiving God you are our creator our sustainer our protector our provider you are our shelter in the storm and you are our strength and refuge God you are the great Jehovah you are on your throne and you are in control you are sovereign over all things God but yet God you are loving and kind and you are our personal personal um, God you are a personal and you want to have a relationship with us God you are forgiving you are patient and God you want none to perish and so you sense Jesus to die for us so that we could have eternal life and we did not have to be in bondage to sin God we thank you for that we praise you we thank you for loving us we love you with our whole heart our soul our mind and our strength and God we just pray for the lost we just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they could be saved we pray, God, for the prodigals to come home. We just pray for them to see where they are, God, and to return to you, to repent, to let you reconcile the relationship, God, to let you forgive them. And uh, we pray, God, for all these people in Florida that are experiencing this great tragedy through this building collapsing, God. We just pray that you would be with every one of them, God that you would comfort these families, that you would give them strength, God, and that you would give them peace. And I was looking a while ago, the body toll now, the deceased body toll is 12, so I guess 149 are unaccounted for now, God. God, we just pray that these deceased are with you and that you would just give their families peace, God, give their friends peace. Such a unexplainable thing that happened in so quickly God 
We just pray that also you would give these patients that are waiting, God, to know that it takes time to dig people out of rubble. God, I'm still holding on for miracles of people to be alive, God, because you are the God of the impossible. God, we just pray for peace, comfort, and strength for all people that have lost family members. And God, we pray for truth. We pray for truth to rise above all the lies that we hear this year, God. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, all right, my friends. So it really doesn't, it's not a song that really goes with. I should have done Amazing Grace is what I should have done. Well, I have, I have a visitor. Maybe he'll go over there and take a nap. He brought his own blanket. Anyway, um, I have my Amazing Grace t-shirt on, but that's not what I shared. I shared freedom. That God's truth is freedom. I love this song and message by Jesus Culture featuring Kim Walker Smith called Freedom. I love this upbeat song and lyrics. Um, I woke up with the thought, why do people lie? I just did. I woke up with that thought this morning, I guess, because I'm following this missing child story and just not buying all the stories that are coming out of it. It's just like a gut instinct thing. It's a Holy Spirit thing. Hey, leave that alone. That's, that's not a DVD player. Stop it. I may have to take him back in the living room and put something on for him. So, is it because of fear? Do they lie because of fear? I think in some of these cases with these missing children, I think they are afraid. They're afraid of the consequences of what's happened. Um, do they not know that God hates all sin and this is sin? No matter how small or big, in God's eyes, all lies are sin. Do people not care? Um, do people not know there are consequences for all sins? And lying is a sin. These are some questions that I posed to myself while I was thinking about it this morning. Perpetrating lies is bondage. And the more people live the lies, the harder their hearts become, and the harder it is to escape. There is great news, though. Jesus forgives sin. Jesus forgives sin. And people can be set free from this bondage of sin, of lies, and all other sins, too. There is great freedom from forgiveness of sin. Are you seeking <coughs> forgiveness today? Then call upon the name of Jesus and receive it. He will wash your scarlet sins white as snow. Is Jesus your Savior today? If not, call upon the name of Jesus and be saved now. Jesus is the only path to heaven and forgiveness of sin. Time is short. The time is now to turn back to the one true God. God wants none to perish. John 3:16, 3. 16, 3 through 21. <laughs> Call upon the name of Jesus and be saved today. Okay, so that is what I shared on Facebook this morning. I, I do a song share every day, so if you get a chance, do go in and listen to the songs that I share. They're really good songs. Um, let's start with our first scripture in Proverbs. It's going to be 12:22. Okay, 12.22 says, Lying lips are abomination to the Lord, but they that deal truly are his delight. So he likes it when we walk in truth and we don't lie. A prudent man concealeth knowledge, but the heart of fools proclaim mis proclaimeth foolishness. Okay, there's more in there. I'm not going to read all of it, but... Um, well, I might. 
Okay. Um, he that speaketh truth Love. showeth forth righteousness, but a false witness deceit. There is that speaketh like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise is health. The lip of truth shall be established forever, but a lying tongue is but for a moment. Deceit is in the heart of them that imagine evil, but to the counselors of peace is joy. There shall no evil happen to the just, but the wicked shall be filled with mischief. Mischief. Lying lips are abomination to the Lord, but they that deal truly are his delight. Okay, so I should have started in on 17 instead of 22. 17 through 22. Okay, so let's move on to uh, Proverbs 19. Proverbs 19. I'm going to see if there's any. All right, we're just going to read uh, maybe down to nine. We may read longer. Okay, so it says virtues and vices. That's what my Bible says. And better is the poor that walketh in his integrity than he that is perverse in his lips and is a fool. Also, that the soul be without knowledge, it is not good, and he that hasteth with his feet sinneth. The foolishness of man perverteth his way, and his heart fretteth against the Lord. Wealth maketh many friends, but the poor is separated from his neighbor. A false witness shall be unpunished, and he that speaketh lies shall not escape. Many will entreat the favor of the prince, and every man is a friend to him that giveth gifts. All the brethren of the poor do hate him. How much more do his friends go far from him? He pursueth them with words, yet they are wanting to him. He that getteth wisdom loveth his own soul. He that getteth understanding shall find good. A false witness shall not be unpunished, and he that speaketh the lies shall perish. Delight is not seemly for a fool, much less for a servant to have rule over princes. Princes, not princess. <laughs> so, you know, God takes lying very seriously. He takes it very seriously. And so let's move to... I might have already read that. Oh, I did read that. I already read 1219 when I read this. Okay. So let's read Psalms 1017 and see what it has to say. So 1017 says, He that worketh deceit shall not dwell within my house. This is God speaking. He that telleth lies shall not tarry in my sight. I will early destroy all the wicked of the land, that I may cut off all wicked doers from the city of the Lord. So again, God does not like lying. Lying is sin in God's eyes. I know a lot of people go, oh... A white lie doesn't hurt anybody, but God sees it as sin, so it does hurt the person that is telling the lie. It does. And a lot of times it hurts the person that's being lied to. Okay, so let's read Ephesians 4.25. Okay, Ephesians 4.25. Hi, my friend Josie. How, oh, how are you doing, Josie? I'm sorry. Um, I didn't see you. Okay. Ephesians 4.25 says, Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry and sin not, let not the sun go down upon your wrath, 
So we are not even really supposed to go to sleep angry. You know, I have done that a few times. And I'm angry when I wake up, when I do. I am still mad about what I was mad about when I went to bed. So now, I, you know, I, I see why we don't need to go to bed angry. We need to take care of things. We need to take care of our feelings and, and take care of things and not not be angry when we go to bed okay so let's read now let's read Revelation 21 8 and God addresses liars in Revelation 21 well all through the Bible he addresses liars and lying okay 21 8 well, let's start with seven. Seven's the good news. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars, all liars, shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone which is the second death okay but we're not gonna we're not gonna leave off there because there's good news and so this is the good news the good news is that God sent Jesus to save us all God sent Jesus to give us amazing grace. When we were wretches, when we were liars, when we were murderers, when we were whatever sin we were caught up in, Jesus died for our sin. So what that means is if you if you're lying, quit lying. Ask for forgiveness and move away from that sin. Turn away from it. Repent. Not only ask for forgiveness, but repent. Turn from that sin. Because lying is sin. It is sin. And it's an abomination to God. But all sin is. He doesn't like any of it. Okay, so 1 John 1, 9. Oh. 1 John wasn't far from Revelation. And then I went... And went over the opposite direction. No. Okay, first John one nine. This is the this is I'm gonna read all of first John one because I really like it. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you the eternal life, which was with the Father, and was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father, and with the Son, Jesus Christ. Okay, I apologize for my son. He will not be quiet over there. All right, I'm used to it. I'll just ignore it like moms ignore toys. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth but if we walk in the light as he is in the light we have fellowship one with another in the blood of jesus christ his son cleanseth us from all sin all sin including lying all sin if we say that we have no sin which we do have sin we need to keep our sin we need to continually ask for forgiveness of our sin we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just 
to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar. We make uh, Jesus a liar if we say that we have no sin. And his word is not in us. So we want to confess of our sins. And, and lying is just another sin, just like all the things that we listed in Revelation that God said will not take part in his kingdom. Um, fearful, unbelieving, the abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So these are the things going unchecked, unchecked, going not repented of, going not uh, forgiven of. Those are the things that will keep you out of heaven, and lying is one of those things. Okay, 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says this, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man, but God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. I speak as to wise men, judge ye what I say. So I'm looking up here to see if there's anything else. There is a lot up there. I don't see lying though, and I'm mostly talking about lying. So those are the scriptures. So we don't have to stay in that lifestyle of lying. We can turn away. We can ask for forgiveness, and we can turn away. God gives us a new day every day of mercies and blessings, and it is our choice what we choose to do with it. We can either follow Jesus or we can follow the world, and then our day is going to go according to probably the decision that we make because there's not a lot of blessings that come with following the ways of the world. There's usually consequences. Okay, how do we want to share the gospel tonight? What do we got here? I found so many ways. I found so many things lately that it's a bit overwhelming. Oh, yes. Oh, found a flash drive too. I can't remember what I put in that envelope. Okay, well, let's see what we can find here. Mm. I kind of like to find something that fits. Mm. How about let's do this. Between you and God. Between you and God. <laughs> oh, I love, i tell you what. I love the kids in our church i got to show you something before I start on this. Okay, so somebody drew Jesus at the top. <laughs> I just love it. And somebody colored this with pencil. It's so funny. Okay. Well, let's get into the seriousness now. Okay. So, our sin separates us from God. So, here is a picture of us and God right up here at the top us and God okay the light on the right represents God God is perfect holy and loving and has provided a way for salvation in contrast the man is in darkness see the man in darkness this is God. This is the man in darkness. The man in darkness represents man in his sin. 
Lying is sin. There's other sins. Separated from God. It separates us from God. We cannot have a close relationship with God if we are living in sin. Sin is more than wrong thoughts or actions, but a heart that is inclined towards evil. Jeremiah 17, 9, the Bible says, All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3, 23, Apart from God's grace, man is without hope. So then there's a picture of Jesus on the cross. No. Jesus, excuse me, Jesus paid the debt for our sin. The cross is a picture of God's grace. God sent his own son Jesus to earth as a man. Jesus died on the cross for us so that he might take away our sins. 1 John 3, 5. The Bible says God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5, 8. Jesus took away our sin in his own body on the cross so that he could bring us to God. Uh, 1 Peter 2.24 and 3.18 The Bible says God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. John 3.16 There is nothing there's nothing we can do on our own to pay the penalty for our sin. If we could, then God would not have sent his son to die for us. Only the blood of Jesus can wash away our sin. Okay, so here is a picture of the tomb. Here is Jesus risen, and Jesus is the way. So after Jesus died, men buried him in a tomb sealed with a huge stone and guarded by soldiers. So Jesus is risen. Three days later, God raised Jesus from the dead. Talk about a miracle. We talked about miracles last night declaring that he truly is the Son of God and that God was satisfied with his payment for sin. Jesus then appeared to many people before returning to his Father in heaven. Jesus showed himself to people. Stop. Hey. Stop. Sorry. Jesus showed himself to people before he went to heaven like hundreds of people saw Jesus so Jesus is the way the only way we can come to God is through faith in Jesus Christ only Jesus has paid the penalty God demands for our sin Jesus said I am the way the truth and the life no man comes to the Father except through me John 14 6 but just knowing these facts does not ensure salvation just because we know all this doesn't mean that we are saved we must respond to God's grace by trusting in Jesus Christ alone as the only one who can forgive our sin and give us God's gift of eternal life So the next part is trust only in Jesus and you can. Trust only in Jesus. The penalty for sin is eternal separation from God. We read about that in Revelation tonight. But Jesus offers you the free gift of eternal life with God. We need to accept this gift God offers. The way we demonstrate our faith in Jesus Christ is by trusting in Him alone for complete payment of our sin. The Bible says that our sin is removed through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. Romans 3.22 
Are you trusting in Jesus for your salvation? You can. The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10, 9. If you are trusting in Christ for your salvation, tell God by praying something like this. And so I'm going to say these words, and you can repeat them if you would like. And then we'll go over some more things. Um, Dear God, thank you for loving me. I confess that I have sinned against you. I believe that your son Jesus died on a cross to pay for my sin and that you raised him from the dead. I trust Jesus alone to forgive me and take away all my sins. I confess that Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Thank you for your gift of eternal life. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So remember, it is not the words of a prayer that save you. God saves you when you respond in faith to his grace. If you trusted in Christ today, Jesus promises you in John 10:27, 28. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I will give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. So that's what Jesus says. So the last part of this is, because you were saved by the precious blood of Christ, you should follow God and learn to please Him. Here are some of His requirements for you to grow spiritually. See, God wants what's best for us. A lot of people think, well, God doesn't want me to have any fun. But that's not what God wants. God wants what's best for you. Not sinning, a lot of times, is protection for us. So, we got the heart. We got the heart right there. Love God and all people. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. This is the great and foremost commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Matthew 22, 36 through 40. And then we've got the little praying man. We've got the little praying man. Pray to God constantly. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Philippians 4, 6 through 7. And then we have the emblem of the Bible. We read the Bible a while ago. We read scripture. I think that's the best way to teach is in God's word. God's word, study the Bible, God's word daily. Start with the Gospel of John. Read one chapter each day. Like newborn babes long for the pure milk of the word, that by it you may grow in respect to salvation. And then we have the little handshake, the fellowship. Fellowship with one another. Meet regularly with other Christians, not forsaking your own assembling together, as is the habit of some but encouraging one another, Hebrews 10.25. And then we have the Great Commission. We have the world with the cross. This is what Jesus has called every one of us to do. 
tell other people about Jesus. And he, Jesus, said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Mark sixteen fifteen. So, now this is like folding a map. I got it all folded wrong. Okay, there we go. Alright, I got it. So this is, this is another E3 resources, just like this, that I do sometimes. It's an E3 resource, and it's really good. And I have another one, too, that's an E3 resource. Oh, I think it's this one. No, that's not. That's student discipleship. Alright, never mind. Maybe I just have two or three of them. Anyway. If you did accept Jesus as your Savior, then welcome to the kingdom family of God. The, um, your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And the angels are rejoicing. So I already gave you some ways that you can grow closer to God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit every day. And so just uh, read the Bible and pray and praise. All right. So let's read Numbers 6, 24 through 26. And uh, like I said, I was on here from 5.30, 6.30, about an hour and a half on a Zoom training earlier. And so then I took a break. I went and ate dinner. I came back and started this. So I'm going to try to get off of here pretty quickly. I've been sitting in front of my computer for about two hours okay so the Lord bless thee and keep thee the Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee the Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace we all need some peace we need some peace in this world wars and rumors of wars and I don't know. There are some things that happened this week that, I don't know, could lead into World War III. I don't know. All right. Well, let's pray. Let's pray for some people. Let's pray for the people in Florida that people would be found, that there would be closure for these family members, that there would be peace for these family members. I can't imagine what it would be like to know that your family member was in their apartment at bedtime and then to find out that their apartment doesn't even exist anymore. That's uh, heartbreaking. So let's, let's remember our brothers and sisters and our, our fellow statesmen in Florida. And I'm sure that we have Texans over there helping because that's what we do. And uh, I've heard some great miraculous testimony from Florida. So God is God is moving, and uh, the hands and feet of Jesus are there. There's love and compassion being poured out on these people, these family members, and these friends that have missing missing people that haven't been found yet. I haven't been heard from for six days. So just pray. Continue to pray for miracles because God is the God of the impossible. And things could still happen. But pray for the deceased to be found so that their family members can bury them. For the alive people to be found so they can rejoice. There's just a lot of things to pray about need to pray for um, I got a prayer request today from my church of a baby I need to pray for that baby and in the family I don't know what's transpired because I've been away from my phone for a while so it's just lots of prayers do you have any prayer requests Josie I hope you had an awesome day today Okay, well, I'm going to 
go ahead and pray. I'll pray for Josie and her family. God, we just thank you. We thank you for everything, God. We thank you that you are on your throne and you are sovereign over all. You are everywhere, God. There is nothing hidden from you. We thank you, God, that you draw us out and away from sin. God, that you prepared a way for us for eternal life through the debt that Jesus paid for our sins, God. We thank you for that. And God, we just pray. I pray for Josie and her family, God. I pray for Josie as she works hard this summer, God, that you would be with her and give her strength, that you would protect her and that you would provide for her and that you would bless her and Austin. God, I pray for Mr. Mike and, and the boys. God, I just pray that you would be with them, that you would bless them and protect them and provide for them also, that you would give him guidance and wisdom, God, just the things that need to be shared with these young men, God. Just pray that if they are not saved by Jesus, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so that they would be saved. God, I pray for Josie's uh, sisters and their family, and I pray for her brothers and their families. I pray for her children and their families. I just pray for blessings and protection and provision, and if any of them are not saved, God, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so that they would be saved. And God, you keep telling me, you keep reminding me that salvation is most important to you right now that we are in the midst of gathering the last harvest before the tri the, uh, the rapture, God, and the tribulation, God, and that time is short, and that many things are going to happen up until that time that are going to draw people to you, God, that are going to draw people towards Jesus. And God, we just pray for our um, brothers and sisters in Florida, our, our fellow statesmen, that are in Florida, God, we just pray that you would be with these families and these friends that they just don't know where their family members are, where their friends are, God. They were there one night and now they're just not anywhere, God. We just pray that the deceased would be found. We pray for miraculous findings of people alive, God. And we pray for the rescuers that are working so hard that have worked day in and day out for six days, God trying to um, dig out people that are buried under 12 stories of rubble, God. And we just pray for patience for people that are waiting to hear news, God. We pray for peace. We pray for comfort. We pray for strength for them, God. We just pray that you would be with them and that they would feel your presence in this, God, and that there would be miraculous testimony come out of this disaster, God, that would glorify your name, God, that it would be all for your glory. God, we just pray, we pray for truth, God, to rise above lies. We pray for people to realize that lying is sin, God, and for them to turn away from it, God, before their hearts get so hardened that it is so hard to escape, God. Just help them to walk in truth and light. Keep following close to Jesus, God. And if they do if they do happen to sin or lie, God, that it's not the end of their Christianity. There is always forgiveness through Jesus, God. All they have to do is ask for forgiveness, but just turn away from that and don't stay in that. Just stay close to Jesus. Walk close to Jesus because Jesus is the good news for everyone and we thank you for that God we thank you for sending Jesus to be our Savior God to extend amazing grace to us when we did not even deserve it God and in Jesus name we pray Amen Amen, amen. <laughs> He said Amen oh, Seth said Amen He fell asleep but then he said Amen Okay my brothers and sisters My pray and share warriors I gotta get off of here I'm, I'm getting sleepy And I had coffee this afternoon 
But um, I hope you have an awesome rest of your evening and an awesome tomorrow. Tomorrow's Wednesday. We have youth tomorrow. And uh, so I won't be here tomorrow night. I'll be at youth. I'll be singing, I'll be praising, and I'll be learning. Because we as leaders learn too when we go. And we'll be teaching and learning. And our youth are doing really good. They are stepping up to the plate and becoming leaders. And we are loving it because we have prayed for that for so long. Well, good night, Josie. God bless you too. You have a great day at work, okay? So we are just so happy with the growth that we're seeing in our in our youth, and uh, just want to end with much love and cyber hugs. Until I see you again, good night. And be blessed. God bless you all and your families abundantly. Good night. <laughs>